At the end of chapter 1052, Apu is having a conversation with Kid and Law um, about new bounties, new epithets, and that there are new Yonko going around. And more likely than not, in the next chapter, we will figure out well who those Yonko actually are. And I'm gonna be honest with you, with Big Mom and Kaido falling, I was not expecting us to have any more Yonkos. I just think that they were going to I guess say who like were or we would know as the viewers who were the best or the top pirates i don't know i feel like the system that we have it's starting to shift away especially with the warlords being abolished etc but we're going to talk about who the two new emperors are because there are still shanks going around and there's still blackbeard so that means that since two yonko fall two more will rise and etc right so if you guys enjoy regular anime content like this, make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you guys never miss out on a new video. With that out of the way, my name is Potential Unleashed, and let's see who the two new Yonko will be. And I think it's fair we should go over the qualities of being an emperor, and I think Luffy and Shanks are the two best people to do that, and also we'll be utilizing them because of Film Red coming out soon. I think we'll pay homage to that. Um, definitely strength, not just your strength, but the strength of your crew. The influence on the world that you have and territories are very important. And we're going to talk about Luffy being the fifth emperor of the sea after Whole Cake Island for a little bit, because that was when he was the unofficial official Yonko. Different Yonko, they judged him. Um, Kaido, he was talking about, you know, you're the brat that messed with my business. Blackbeard saying, hey, you're not there just yet. Big Mom talking about she didn't lose to him and Shanks smiling. So they all had different opinions on him and his title of being a Yonko, where Shanks was the only one who really approved. And he wasn't there yet. The only thing that I'd say was he lacked the strength as displayed when he got one-shotted by an actual Yonko. And I think for a long time um, in the One Piece community, we were debating if Luffy was ready to be a Yonko. And at Whole Cake Island, he wasn't, but now after Wano, he is. In terms of strength, you need to be a top-tier character. You need to compete against other top tiers in a one-on-one -on -one fight um, where you don't necessarily need to win, but you need to be able to last where you don't get one shot and has to be high or extreme diff. You need to have the advanced versions of hockey, so advanced conquerors especially, um, because um, like Kaido, he said, only the very strongest can use it. Um, and he also... Well, that was Rio, but he also compared Luffy to like um, Shanks, to Zebe, to Roger, Whitebeard, etc. And if you don't have advanced conquerors, then awakenings or having a strong dove through are the next best thing. Look at Law and Kid, what they were able to do. And your crew also needs to be strong, not just yourself. Look at Luffy, he has the Grand Fleet. He also has his main members of the crew, Zoro. He's anywhere between mid to high first or low top tier. Same with Yamato, she's around the same level as Zoro. I think Sanji's slightly weaker than them. He's probably low first. And then there's Jinbei, who's probably third, second commander. Then there's influence. We'll talk about what Shanks has um, and how Whitebeard and other members of the crew, especially Marco, he praised him. Talk about Red Hair wouldn't do anything foolish when they class. Sengoku, he allowed him to take uh, aces and Whitebeard's body weight because he respected him. I believe this is along the lines of only because of you or it's you, Red Hair. And the Gorosei has respect for him as well. The fact that they are willing to meet with him. Territories, we'll talk about Luffy. He doesn't necessarily have official territories but whenever he saved the country he became their ally and I think well now that he has the title of a Yonko that they'll be willing to raise the flag I think countries like Alabasta, Fishman Island, Wano, Dressrosa and probably some more will be willing to raise Luffy's flag so in the end I think that Luffy is definitely one of those who is considered a new emperor so that leaves only one more spot remaining and call me crazy, but I don't think that those titles are going to Kid or Law because I personally think that since they beat Big Mom, if both of them don't get it, then none of them should, right? Do they have the strength? Yes, like I mentioned, they awaken the Devil Fruit, they beat Big Mom, it's pretty impressive. 
but their overall crew lacks strength. Look at Kid, he only has Killer, and Law has, well he has Beppo, but I don't want to mention him because Beppo wasn't on the rooftop. And they don't have any Conquerors user, I mean Kid does, but it's him. He doesn't have advanced Conquerors, and when you look at Luffy, he has three members, including himself. He has Zoro, Yamato, they can use advanced versions. Big Mom, she had Katakuri, the former Pirate King. He had um, Rayleigh, he had Shanks, um, he had Odin. Then there's Wiper, he had Odin, he had Ace, he had himself. So it just shows that having multiple Conquerors is very important. And something else is in terms of influence, um, besides Law um, at Punk Hazard and being a warlord, you know, he has more influence, I'd say, than Kid. Um, but I think a lot of it was primarily because of his alliance with Luffy. Kid, his influence, he had an alliance, but, you know, that fell into shambles. <laughs> Get it? Because Law, Sham. Anyway, um, that, was, that was the dad joke. But Kid, he also, you know, he was merciless. Uh, I think their influence, it may not be on the level of Luffy, but is it on the level of Yonko? Maybe. I think they have their connections and their way of doing stuff, but they also don't have territories. Um, I can't tell you any land that would be willing to raise their flag or that they reign over um, with an iron fist. So it's not that I think they lack the qualities of a Yonko, I just think that one, their crew isn't strong enough to be a Yonko caliber crew, and two, because they're, if, if there's five Yonko that they're doing, then I could see both of them, but because they don't, it's only two getting promoted and Luffy obviously took one of the spot, I don't, and, and also I think it would be funny that both of them get in seeing their reactions as well. So now we'll look over some characters that I think have the potential um, to be Yonko, I think some more than others, um, and I'm gonna include some warlords on here, I think, but the problem with them, um, I think some of them meet the expectations in some aspects, and others they don't but the first person we're going to talk about is katakuri i think it only makes sense that because of big mom's defeat that he will move up and be the new captain of the big mom pirates he has advanced observation which goes well with his double fruit so he has um great control over that um and he could have gotten stronger because we didn't see him in guana and in terms of is he still damaged i'd say not because if you look at Luffy, Luffy was healed and he, you know, he got beaten and bruised like a couple of times during the arc. He got knocked out and he still came back up and re-healed. So I think that Katakuri is fine. And him and Luffy have a special relationship. I can't wait to see them interact again. But the only caveat about this is whenever Marco became the acting captain of the Whitebeard Pirates, he wasn't named a Yonko. Maybe that's because he lost to Blackbeard. I don't know. And also, we may see Katakuri in the cover story, so we may see um, something about him being damaged or still injured. So that's a reason why Katakuri could be one of the next Yonko. In terms of the Warlords, Buggy definitely has a great shot because of how Oda does his gags because when you look at what happened at Marine Ford, he survived against three admirals when he shouldn't have and other things that were in play there. And he is already affiliated with Shanks. He's affiliated with Rayleigh and Roger as well. And personally, I think it's gonna be hilarious seeing how Buggy ended up surviving a, a kidnapping or like the Marines going after him and him getting the title of a Yonko because he's already been a regular pirate, he's been a warlord. So the only thing left for him is to be a Yonko. I mean, I guess the Pirate King too, but that title's going to Luffy. There's also Boa Hancock. She has a broken devil fruit. She has decent hockey. She is a Conqueror's user. And I do think that we underappreciate her strength. If you're looking at the original Warlords, I think she was the third strongest, maybe even the second. I do think that now at the point we are in the story, she's anywhere between second commander and first commander. So her strength, it's up there. But in terms of overall crew, I think she lacks that because not because her crew is all made of women, but her sisters aren't as strong. Marigold and Sinisonia, I believe that's what their names are. Um, they're not necessarily strong. 
and they don't have like overwhelming names on their crew she does have territory in amazon lily um and in terms of strength sengoku even praised her strength i do want to mention that um but because she doesn't care for men she doesn't really interact with the outside world i mean they do recognize her strength but that's about it next we have weevil in terms of strength he was stated to be that of a young white bear his bounty was i believe 480 million before it got frozen he travels with his mom but that's literally all we know about him we don't know his influence on the world and we don't know if he has territories and then there's also mihawk he's been compared to be equal or greater than shanks in terms of strength he also has his territory is kuragana i believe island um the little dracula mansion thing um he doesn't have a crew he has baboons then that's about it he's more of a lone wolf and honestly i see mihawk more as a bounty hunter who has nothing to do and over a pirate but that's just me he's respected throughout the world though everybody all swordsmen it's their dream well if you're a capable swordsman and you want to test your strength it's their dream to class swords with dracula and mihawk so he has everything except for him being with a crew and having what you would say well at least what i would say an ambition of being a pirate and then lastly the person we've all been waiting for somebody that i think can make a comeback is anel what okay okay it's a long shot but i know we all want him back in the story i believe oda stated that um his bounty would have been 500 mil or around that range if he came to the blue sea he has an insane devil fruit along with his observation hockey is probably one of the best in the series and there's also a two-year time skip since then so maybe he could have gotten stronger but at the same time the last we saw him he was going towards the moon and i believe in the cover stories he actually made it to the moon um so he might not be on the actual blue sea so he probably doesn't have a crew probably doesn't have any influence on the world whatsoever and he doesn't have any territories but these are just some of the characters that i think have the potential to be yonko um definitely luffy if i had to pick somebody who's going to be it's probably if it's not kid in law it's probably either going to be buggy or honestly those are really the only ones i could see one of those three or katakuri as well but let me know who you guys think will be the new Yonko of the sea besides Luffy. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also hit the notification so you guys never miss out on a new video. Find me on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, and TikTok. It's on the screen and in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching. And don't forget to unleash your potential.